crime. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming out uh, to uh, to press conference to talk about traffic safety. You know, we're on the uh, the eve of school beginning again. Uh, all the kids heading back uh, on Monday, and we want to talk about some of the important things that both drivers, pedestrians, students, parents all need to be thinking about so we can ensure that uh, everyone is safe. First and foremost is just awareness. Everyone needs to be aware that school is starting on Monday. We're gonna see a lot more traffic on the roads. We're gonna see a lot more kids either walking to school, biking to school. You're going to see a lot more school buses on the road getting the kids back and forth to school. So again, it's something that happens every year, but we need to remind the community and the community needs to remember this is the uh, school year beginning and there's some safety factors we want to talk about first and foremost school zones pay attention to the school zones pay attention to the traffic in the school zones remember that you cannot use a cell phone while you are in a school zone hands-free or not we you will be cited for that uh, one of the more dangerous things is when people pass school buses uh, you know with the arms extended and the red lights flashing uh, unfortunately we still see that happen and that is one of the most dangerous things for the children on those buses is when they're trying to exit the bus and cross the road and we have vehicles that refuse to slow down or stop as required by law. So again, it's just a reminder to motorists that you have to uh, pay attention to that. Pay attention to the school crossing guards. Again, they are out there to protect the, our children. The children of our community, very vulnerable positions crossing these roadways. So again, pay attention to the crossing guards pay attention to the school bus arms, pay attention to the school zones, and adhere to the laws related to those. Uh, another thing that often happens is following school buses too closely. Uh, people get impatient. We understand that traffic is always a challenge in this community and that uh, with the onset of school that we're gonna see that additional traffic on the roadway, but do not follow too closely behind school buses because we know the dangers that that too can pose. When you're transporting your children to school, parents remember to buckle them up. Make sure your kids are also seat belted for their safety as you're, trans as you're transporting them to school. And remember the laws on child safety seats, that a child that is under eight years old or less than four feet nine inches is required to be in a safety seat, not a seat belt. So again, when transporting your children, ensure you're doing it in the safest manner and in a manner that is compliant with Texas law. Remember that children unfortunately love to dart out from behind vehicles, from behind buses. They're in a hurry to either get to school to see their friends or to get home after school to have that after school snack. And they may not be paying attention. Remember, they're the kids, you're the adult, you're the one that has taken the driver's test, you understand the law and you need to comply with the law. So pay attention also to the kids that sometimes do dart from behind those parked cars or that bus. We will be out doing uh, heavy enforcement as we always are. We will have an initiative running through the beginning of September where we will be focused on the school zones. You will see Austin police officers along with AISD police and Chief Evo will speak here in a moment as well out there in force because these are the most vulnerable members of our community at this time, these kids going to school. So we are gonna have a heavy enforcement. Our motor units will be out there in addition with officers and cars, and we will be enforcing all of these laws, whether it be the hands-free ordinance, not using the cell phones at all in a school zone, speeding in a school zone, passing the school buses. Again, we will be out with a strong enforcement posture to make sure that we do not have a tragedy occur or a child hurt in this community. If you're riding a bicycle, to school. Remember, wear your helmet, stay in the designated lanes, don't pull out into traffic, and again, for parents or for others that are just riding the road, be aware that kids are not only going to be on the sidewalks, they're not only going to be in crosswalks, but we will see a large number of bikes as well. Make sure you're aware of the city's ordinance on giving safe passage to those that are on bikes and that you are required to give them three feet distance when you are passing bikes if they are on the road. Again, if everyone complies with the law, then we will have a safe start to the school year. But everyone has to take ownership. Our kids need to take ownership, not darting out from the cars, walking within the confinements of a crosswalk, riding bikes in safety, and then our drivers need to do the same by paying attention to all the laws. So again, we will have an initiative going on. And last year, in the first week leading up to school, we issued 300 speeding tickets in a school zone. We issued eight for passing a school bus, 14 
for using wireless handheld devices in a school zone, and another 93 for using electronic devices while driving. So that was within a week. We will do it again this year and we will cite those we find in violation because again, it's just too dangerous not to be paying attention when we've got our kids out there traveling to school. So with that, um, I'm going to ask if Chief uh, Eboy from AISD Police will also take a moment to update you on their efforts as well. Chief, thank you. Chief. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I want to, obviously the biggest focus with the school district is student safety. So we want to make sure that our students get to school on time and we want to make sure our students get to school safe. So we need to be aware of our speeds around school zones. We need to understand that there's going to be over 83,000 kids that are going back to school on Monday. There's going to be kids that don't know where they're going. There's going to be parents that aren't sure of buses, what routes to take, those types of things. So I want to encourage, I want to give, you, I want to give the parents a few tips, give the citizens a few tips, just to kind of help through the process. If your if you're student or child is walking to school, make sure they understand the route, how they get to school. Make sure they're walking in pairs. Make sure that there's a safe place for them to go if something happens, if there's an emergency. If they are riding bikes, make sure they're wearing some reflective uh, vests or something so they're very visible because last thing you want to do, and it goes back to cell phone usage in the school zones, distracted drivers, drivers are going too fast, going above the speed limit. The flashing yellow lights mean something. Please slow down, start getting used to that. I know it's summertime, we've, we've gotten away from that, but we need to start really strengthening that and understanding we need to slow down. Our school buses, very big, a very big issue. Um, we've had three incidences since uh, I would say in the last year and a half. Two incidences where two, actually two students were hit by cars that have passed the school zone. Uh, very fortunately, they, they were not seriously injured. Uh, recently, we had a child almost get hit and the driver swerved to the right to avoid the child. The stop sign was out, stop sign was out, flashing red light, driver still went through. I want to piggyback on what Chief Manley said. The kids will dart. They will get off the bus and they'll go to left instead of right. And we just don't know where these kids are going to go. We need to be safe and not distracted on our cell phones. So please remember the school buses have amber lights, the flashing yellow lights. They're there for a reason. They're, they're warning you to slow down. Slow down. The bus is about to come to a stop. Keep your distances. If you see a bus that's coming towards you, slow down a little bit. Be aware that if that bus is going to um, offload or not. We have a stop arm system, and if you violate passing the school bus when the, when the stop sign out stop sign is out and you have the uh, flashing red lights, that's a three hundred dollar fine. So we want we want to we want to make sure that people are aware and be safe. Um, other issue, another thing that I want people to be aware of is that um, that the students. There, some of these students are going to different schools, middle school, high school, and they're, 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 they're not familiar with the area. So please, please be, be careful because they may cross. And, and I know I said that earlier, but please be careful. They may cross and if you're a distracted driver on a cell phone, it could cause some injuries. So um, other than that, just uh, we want to have a good start of the school year and, um, and we appreciate, AISD Police appreciates all the support the Austin Police Department provide us. We're, our officers will be out there. Um, my patrol division, our patrol division will be out there um, enforcing also speed limit of the speed limits and, and of course the stop arm. We have over 300 buses that are equipped with with cameras, and so that's going to be that's going to be part of our enforcement also. But uh, once again, we couldn't do it with the without the Austin Police Department supporting us. So thank you again, Chief Mallory, for that. All right, we'll open it up if there are any questions. Um, Question for AISD. I wanted to get your name one more time too. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Chris Evoy. My last name is spelled E V O Y, and I'm the interim chief for the for the department. Awesome. Great to meet you, by the way. Nice I to meet you, you too. Personally, but yeah. yeah. Um. So you guys issue about three point six million dollars worth of citations or something like that. I just wanted to, to get that from you. Well, we we've issued. I don't know the exact amount of, of monies, but I know we've issued probably close to over close to twelve thousand uh, violations since the program has. Uh, started, which was it's been about close to two years. So yeah, we we have quite a few, we've had quite a few people passing our buses. Have you had pretty good compliance with people actually sending in the fines they owe? Um, 
Yes and no. I mean, I, I can't really answer to a lot of that because our, the, the company that handles that, our American Traffic Solutions, they actually keep up with a lot of that. Our, our big focus is obviously the enforcement piece, reviewing, reviewing the violation and making sure that we have a violation and then it, and then it gets over. Well, I think we can talk about some of the more adult students coming back when we get the college students coming back to town and all then yes I think you know the more obviously the more college students you have in town we may see more issues with uh, either burglaries of student housing or student vehicles when they don't lock up their valuables or lock up their residences take things with them and then again we expect to see an increase of the uh, patronage of the entertainment districts across the city. So we will see some increase in activity when the students return. But again, it happens every year and uh, we're prepared for it. Chief Manley, um, we have a bit of an anecdote with, uh, from Chief Elvoy about some of the incidences and accidents that he's seen. Has APD ever run into a situation well, a lot like his or a kid was just doing his thing and a car wasn't paying attention? Sure. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of examples, either during the school year when they happen related to a school bus boarding or, 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 un, or a student leaving a school bus, and, and we'll work those in conjunction with AISD. But then we see crashes involving children with tragic outcomes year round. We've, we've lost, you know, we've lost children in this community to traffic crashes. Um, children that were walking across the street, either in a designated uh, crosswalk or not. So this is a message that's timely right now because school is beginning next week but it's also a, a message that's timely every day of the year because kids are out there and let's face it, kids are gonna do what kids do. So we, we, uh, we think that it's appropriate to give this message today as we move into the school year. But again, these are, these are driver tips that need to be in everyone's mind anytime they're behind the wheel. Follow up on that. Uh, this weekend is another uh, no refusal weekend, I believe that's what it's called, right? Yes. No. This initiative that you're starting with the beginning of the school year, is that going to be a recurring theme as well? Yes, we do enforcement in the school zones throughout the year. We do a very concentrated effort at the beginning of the year to get everyone's attention so that they're used to seeing either an AISD police car or an Austin police car around the school zone so that the community is aware that we will be out there and we will be conducting enforcement. We don't stop just because the initiative will stop at the beginning of September. Our motor officers and our district officers still pay attention to school zones and other issues such as school bus passings illegally throughout the year. Keith, you touched on a little bit. What could, what can parents do as far as, uh, you know, keeping their kids safe? What tips can you give parents? You know, so like I think Chief Evoy mentioned a, a few of the things about the safe place and all that. I think for me, what it is is make sure your children are educated on the safety of riding a bike. Make sure they have a bicycle helmet that fits appropriately so that if they were to fall off their bike, they're protected. Make sure they know how to ride in a bike lane. Uh, if they're carrying books to school, make sure you've provided them with a backpack. Don't expect them to hold onto a satchel or hold onto their books while they're riding a bike. It's just, just too dangerous. So make sure that your kids have the appropriate gear if they're gonna ride their bikes and talk to them about the dangers of vehicular traffic about the challenges of walking out or darting out from behind a car. Teach them about when you're about to cross the street, it's the left, right, left rule. Look left, look right, but then look left again before you step out because that's the lane you're about to enter. So I think it's a lot of common sense tips like that to just ensure that your kids know the most they can as they go out either on bike or on foot. Last question. Good? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.